Opinions, viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Scarefest Radio, the radio you can see. And happy Derby weekend, everybody. Happy, or as we say in Kentucky, enjoy your Amish NASCAR race. Anyway, everybody, uh, this is ScareFest TV. Uh, I'm your host, Wes Forsyth. I'm joined tonight by only Adrian, uh, because uh, Brandon was called away at the last minute, as does happen in his line of work. But where's I didn't know. Doing hats. It's Derby weekend, woman. God, hold on. <laughs> it was planned to be a surprise for everyone. And it was, obviously. But yes, um, it is Derby weekend. It is May 5th, 2023, the original broadcast date. Um, now, I do, while while she's looking for a hat. Um, I don't have any hats. <laughs> Well, I had to make one. Yeah, for the record, this is not exactly something we had laying about the house. Anyway, the, um, the, 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 now, now, see, the, I've got you all disarmed. I've got you all disarmed. This is bullshit. <laughs> Brandon could not be here tonight. He could not join us. Whoops. Uh-oh. Yep. I'm having a wardrobe malfunction. I have a Scarefest hat. Well, turn, turn it inside out and see what it looks like. That's what people do at Churchill Downs all the god dang time. <laughs> anyway, um, the uh, Brandon could not be with us. He was called away on social work emergencies. And in the process of that, we don't have all of our I's dotted and T's crossed that we promised. <laughs> and therefore, there are not three announcements tonight. Uh, if Adrian wants to explain it better, but... The I's are not dot, dotted, the T's are not crossed, and and what we were led to believe was a done deal um, turned out not to be. So, uh, yeah, now that being said, we are going to do a special midweek something. We're going to try to make it up to you all, but we are not ready for the guest announcement <laughs> that we were going to have tonight, and because of that, we didn't have other guest announcements in lieu of those, so that is our bad. Yeah, actually, but. that and, uh, yeah, the, the whole, I just had that, I was just setting it up like 15 minutes before showtime. Uh, so anyway, uh, but yeah, it, and then it, uh, it, it, it was not to be, I apologize once again, but uh, I will say I'm back from a successful tour of the Full Moon Sisters Bazaar in Lexington. Oh, Atlanta, yeah. Michigan. That facility is top notch, except for the internet. I'm just going to oh. say it. But as far as the actual vendor floor, it's neat. It's it got enough parking. It's, um, I wouldn't say it's overwhelmed with parking, but it's it, the, the, the Shriners have a very nice facility. Uh, it was roomy. Um, it was a little cold because basically they had the air conditioner turned on last weekend, believe it or not. That was, but that's not the facility's fault. That is the fault of a bunch of women in menopause running the goddamn thing. Um, yeah. So I just threw everybody under the bus there. Uh, so, uh, yeah. And then, a oh, by the awesome. way, well, and Adrian, you cannot. I saw your little thing on the post this week. You do not have. It's too late for plausible deniability. Damn it. Yeah. Nope. You're on record. On. Yep. You I don't even know on what record. this is. I don't. I, so, I have no idea. <laughs> See, everybody, it's what I have to put up with. Um, 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 <laughs> now, here's something we can talk about. Yes. The best of Lexington. Oh, 
I did see an email come through about that. And so we do need to get our campaign going so we can take our, uh, take our top place like we did last year. That was awesome. Now I do the, um, everybody you can go to vote and we would be under annual events, Scarefest weekend, or actually it's under things to do slash annual event Scarefest weekend, or, or go to the Scarefest weekend Facebook page. Mm-hmm. And it's actually pinned on there. I've been told. I didn't even see it. I. This is why we announce this stuff, everybody. I did. My uh, my wife slash producer came up here and said, "Make sure you mention the best of Lexington thing is going on." Guess what? I had no fucking clue. I did. Ju- I did just see the email come through about that, and uh, Rachel shared it on Facebook. I think day before yesterday, maybe. Um, so I haven't really got to dig deep into that. Um, just everything has been absolutely bonkers lately as far as having to-do lists and all sorts of stuff going on. My to-do list is like three pages long and that's scare fest and personal stuff and trying to get a new hotel, um, added onto our contracts, um, which is great because that means, you know, we're getting bigger and we need more rooms or higher quality rooms for the guests that we're bringing. And one thing that, you know, that affects is like our booking with bringing in people and bringing in like, um, what word would you use? Like, well, one people that haven't ever been to Scarefest before and also bringing in, you know, um, higher tiered people. Uh, people that have been in more films are more widely known, you know, things like that. And their requirements are a little bit different than a standard room. So I've been sweet shopping <laughs> this week, trying to find some places to put some class po- folks. So um, that has been something. Ch- Chad Harlan says you should check into the Sportsman Motel. The Sportsman, I don't know what that is. That is like, is that the one down on Winchester Road, Chad? The one oh. char- I think that's the one that charges. Is that the one that I don't want to say this? Power? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. And then I said, wait a minute. What if I'm wrong about the one I'm thinking about? And then they. <laughs> oh, well, I will pet. say um, for people that, you know, are looking for fancy accommodations, I was sent a video a couple days ago, and I think I sent it on to Wes and Brandon. They are going to be opening a new hotel. Uh, right down the street from our convention. I didn't bother and watching. I knew nobody was going to put me up in their continued. Yeah, place. well, it's um a $37 million hotel. And I was so excited because it's very close to the show and it looks fancy. It's right in the distillery district. And the rooms, uh, if you go online to book a room for October, are $450 a night for a standard room. Not a suite, a regular room. Is it a ni- at least a nice standard room? I happen to know of another hotel in downtown Lexington that charges like upwards of three hundred because I've stayed there with Scarface many times, and honestly, the rooms at the Days Inn are are better, bigger, are bigger, <laughs> much bigger, and, and and just as clean usually. Yeah, and and yeah, that's um. So I, I mean, I, it you know it, there was nothing, uh, there was. When I looked at it, and you would think with all the traveling that I do now, I would pretty much be like a hotel aficionado at this point. Um, but I don't know. I guess I'm pretty easy when it comes to traveling as long as you go in and the room is clean. And that's that's it. That's all. For me, that's all it's got to be. Now, that being said, um, and I won't say names because I can't remember. Um, I, d- I took a personal trip a couple of months ago and I booked at this place and it was way nicer than I was expecting it to be. And they let me upgrade to a suite for like eight bucks or something, um, something ridiculous. So I upgraded and I go in and the room is huge. Uh, it's an open concept floor plan. The furniture was hideous couch was like orange or something but you go in and the couch is on the left and uh there's a table and the whole wall is windows it's probably the size of like three normal rooms and then there's a table in the middle which is like a business 
kind of area. Right. And there was a huge flat screen TV and it said, welcome, Adrian. And you could take that TV and swivel <laughs> it because the bed was on the right side of the room. And it was, the room was really nice. Like I said, the furniture was hideous. But then I walked into the bathroom, which had like the, the shower was bigger than my entire bathroom at my house. Um, and the sink had this, I don't know what it was. Um, the entire inside of the sink had dried up black all over it that was flaking off the porcelain I guess and um or whatever the stone was that it's made out of maybe it was uh, granite or something um but I took a photo of it and it was late when I checked in like 10 o'clock so I went down to the front desk and I was like hey I don't like to complain but is there something you can do about this and the guy at the counter was horrified and sent someone up to clean it up but um yeah so I'm I'm pretty easy when it comes to rooms as long as I have somewhere clean to sleep. But um, I haven't had any issues with our our hotel that we normally stay in for Scarefest. It's always been you know pretty good. But some of these hotels down there are already going for over four hundred dollars a night. Well, you'd think with the whole swivel, if they would all install the the swivel TV like you had in that suite, and yeah, use, and use the the webcam function, they could offset. The, see, I'm trying to get her to fall for that, but anyway, okay, everybody. Oh my um, God. Let's let's go ahead and we'll do our commercial break, and that'll at least okay. give us justification for taking up their Friday night. Everybody, we'll be right back with more Scarefest TV. Horror, movie, fan. Four. Life. On Facebook. Find us. Four watch parties. Four news. Four memes. Four friends. Four life. Horror movie fans for life. Join us. And welcome back to Scarefest Television. This is our Derby Day episode, and this hat is in honor of Mandy Noel at Fox 56. Because I swear, except for hers being red, this is the same damn thing she wore to the Oaks today. Just going to throw that out there. So, Interesting. Yeah, it was. It looked exactly like this. Only it was maybe tilted a little more. But I only have so much camera. I don't have a... There you go. That's more of the look she was going for. Okay. So. Hmm. Just, just wanted to put that out there. I thought that would really look a lot better on camera than it did, for the record. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, everybody, uh, just if you just tuned in, we do want to apologize. We do not have our three celebrity announcements, but we're going to do a special announcement blast uh, later this week, probably midweek. Uh, so watch the group, watch the Scarefest page, and you will be getting these announcements post-haste. And uh, then, then I can listen to all the uh, Facebook messages. <laughs> who, who, who'd you announce tonight? Uh, well. Um. I, and I hope the person's not tuning in because I'm about to throw somebody under the bus, but not my name. Someone messaged me uh, uh, on, on the uh, Facebook page and asked about a certain celebrity. I forget. It wasn't even someone I'd heard of. And I said, well, the best thing to do, oh. r rather than messaging us here in the ticket department, because that's really what that's there for, uh, the general information thing, is to put it in the Scarefest fan group on Facebook, gave her the URL, gave her the address, and said, you know, then if you if we see a groundswell, we'll, we'll be able to look into it. And the person asked me, is this like posting on Facebook? 
and all the things that went through my head. The only thing, I, the only answer I could come up with was yes, it is exactly like posting on Facebook. on Facebook. That's exactly. Yeah, and that's a... my response to that was um, a couple of years ago, we had a guest staying with us at Scarefest um, at the host hotel. And there was, as some of you might remember this, there was a little bit of an issue with the furnace at the hotel and it got really cold one night. So this particular guest, and she wasn't being unreasonable. She said, I've got an audition on Tuesday. If I get sick uh, or lose my voice from sleeping in this really cold room all weekend, I may miss this opportunity. And of course we don't wanna do that. So I called the front desk over at the hotel and the, the young lady that answered the phone was probably 19, 20 years old. And I'd seen her over there. And I asked her, I said, hey, you know, I know you all are having some engineering issues with your furnace. Do you have any space heaters available? And the girl pauses for a second and she says, no, uh, we don't have any space heaters. And I was like, okay, well, that's odd. Normally, you know, hotels will keep some of those in stock for people, uh, fans, heaters, things like that. And um, before I could say anything else, she said, uh, well, we do have heaters. And I said, you do? And she was like, yeah. I was like, they're the small portable heaters. And she said, yeah. And I was like, well, do they heat spaces? And she said, they do. And I was like, well, <laughs> perfect. That's exactly what we need. <laughs> so can you send one up for me? <laughs> um, that was uh, the highlight of my day at that point. Um, but no, we, you know, another thing that we can talk about as far as, you know, uh, the show and things that we're working on right now, honestly, the, I have been so busy this last week with planning and organizing and events and until things are signed and stamped and ready to go, we can't talk about specifics. Um, but one thing that I did send to Wes this week was a really beautiful spreadsheet, right, Wes? My you spreadsheet. Did. It's a colorful one. Cheap. Yeah, you opened it, so it was nice. <laughs> remember? I yeah, I remember you asking me about it, but... Yeah, so <laughs> anyway, it was beautiful, and there were like 10 different colors on the spreadsheet, so it kind of looked like um, a unicorn threw up on it, but it was all of the event layouts for the meeting Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, door. that's what it yes. was. Yes, and um, Diana actually set up the template for me, and then I got to go in and color all the little blocks and put all the scheduling things in there. So one of the really cool things that I do want to talk to all about is the fact that since we have all this meeting space this year, one thing that we're going to be able to do at the show is have one of those spaces set up in like a classroom style. And some of the things that we're looking at right now for that, um, again, they're not specifically confirmed, but since you're here spending your time with us, I'll give you a little, little tease into some of the things that we're looking at. One of the classes that we're looking at is a cosplay class, and we've been wanting to do something like this for years, but most of the folks that host these classes have a pretty steep ticket fee that they charge to attend one of the, especially the more advanced, not just intro to cosplaying, but this is, you know, some more advanced stuff. And the class is um, about two hours long, but we are looking at doing that and it will be completely free. Um, for you all. So uh, any costs associated with that, the show will pick up and that'll be something that we can do for free. Um, another, and Wes is going to roll his eyes probably, but um, I had a celebrity reach out to me this week and it's someone we haven't announced yet, but we'll be announcing very soon. And she is actually a yoga instructor and has asked me if she could host yoga before the show opens one day. Why would I roll my eyes at that? Well, maybe because I don't know who the celebrity is. <laughs> you were just talking about yoga, though, right? Yes, I I would probably attend that as long as they, it's a beginner class and I don't put like, my ankles behind my head or something. So that's the other thing we talked about because um, logistically, uh, finding a whole bunch of yoga mats and everything, especially like, you know, with COVID and sanitizing stuff. So what we talked about doing was um, doing chair yoga. So it, it's a little bit different, but you can get a lot of the same uh, right. things out of that. 
And um, so that is something that we are looking at doing. And I might I, feel them. I want to roll around on the carpet with a celebrity. I'm just going to say it. I don't need a <laughs> mat. Um, now, on the topic of uh, chair yoga, though, that was what I was looking into. I actually, Facebook, there was an app. Because if you, I'll put it this way. If you Google anything about yoga or apparently look up on TikTok, whatever, uh, Facebook will find out and they will suggest ads to you. And one of the yes. ads that's been popping up on my my line has been chair yoga. Oh, cool! You know, don't do this, do this. So they make you before they actually give tell you anything. They make you do a quiz, and the quiz is about your body type. Yeah. Well, I felt I was being fairly honest. I chose, you know, the not obese, but the the yeah. soft dad body. Yeah. Image. Yeah. And then I got to my weight and height, and I put that in as honestly as I as I was as I could as I was aware. And then at the end, they corrected me, and they said I was fat. Oh, what? Yes, they told me that I. I mean, they used the picture of the guy with the couldn't see his feet or nothing. That's bullshit. Well, it might that be, is. but it hurt my feelings. That is bullshit. And then uh. Of course, in now this uh, not not to spoil my uh, uh, Patreon subscribers, but I also did. I have actually gained about five pounds uh, since this, but it's all muscle. You know how I know? How? Because my pants are falling down at the same rate over, <laughs> over my little skinny ass. They just that is, that's one thing I told Wes was that it was yesterday. I think I said, "Hey, can I call you?" And normally, Wes needs. The, you know, to fight the urge to have a cigarette when I call. Yeah. Um, so he said, you've got five minutes. It's it's day, uh, treadmill day, therapy day, rehab, whatever it is. I don't they know. call it okay. rehab, but it's treadmill day. Um, so I was very good. Uh, our call was actually only six minutes, which is very good for me. If Wes says he has five minutes, normally it's 50. Um, <laughs> but near the end of the call, I said, I would ask how you're doing. But I subscribe to your Patreon now, so I don't have anything to talk to you about. <laughs> so now that he's putting all these updates, which I absolutely love, um, and I, I don't even get on Patreon. I get them in an email. Yep. So I get a little notification, and I'll like read my email. And then I'm like, well, I guess I don't need to call and check on Wes now. <laughs> this is what's going on. So huh. it's, I love it, and I hate it. I will say that it is about as intimate about as the watching experience. porn. Well, no, it's not that kind of intimate. I mean, it might be eventually. Well, I but, mean, um, it's just on a screen. Like, you don't get any, like, you know. I'm saying I, I don't feel like I hold a lot back. No, I love it. I mean, I had an entire blog about having to poop. So, there, that'll... Yeah. That'll, that'll sell the tickets. That'll sell the sponsorship. Yeah, absolutely. If you haven't subscribed, you need to. <laughs> um, but most importantly, we subscribe to keep Wes accountable. That's right. Because here's the... Everyone, as I explained last weekend to everyone at the uh, Fool Moon Sisters Bazaar, there are two things that will motivate me. One of them is revenge, and the <laughs> other is money. And uh, <laughs> so, basically, this entire process... Is to get re the my cardiology department now the, the the rehab girls, one of them I found out smokes. It's so lovely. Um, <laughs> That's the, amazing. Uh, the the yeah the cardio rehab uh, 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 nurse actually I'm giving her points on stopping smoking now. The uh, but they're treating me. I mean they're working my ass off now because I Good. made I kind of made, made it you know I said you know hey the the other people are going you know. And I said, I get more exercise walking to the fucking car than I do coming in here. <laughs> so they've stepped up their game, and I, I'm coming out of there. I am tired. I'm sore. The uh, My doctors, however, in the cardiology department, my my, now my my general practitioner, she's pretty good. I think she's not, she's not softballed it. My cardiology department is treating me, treating me like I'm a dozen fucking eggs. You know, oh, you're so delicate. You're so gentle. You're going to explode and drop dead and catch on fire. And, uh, <laughs> Which you have done almost all of those things. True, right? but I survived them. That's the point. I okay. survived them without the help of medical intervention, intervention? except for the That's one. Not, 
The one no, time. <laughs> one time. One time just in the that ER. One episode. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So. Where the blood pressure cuff just said error because it wouldn't go that high. You know. Well, that's that, yeah. That that is that that was true. Now that but yeah that but that I don't call that the intervention. That was for, that first uh, came up with the doctor that did not a goddamn thing. He thought I well, was going to be fine. So. Yeah. Now I will say that keeping up with what you're doing has inspired me. I did a couple nights ago go back to the gym for the first time in three months. And I found out how quickly, if you don't use it, you lose it. Because when I got <coughs> on to, I, I went in to do um, upper body and then cardio. And I sat down on the first machine and I put it on 30 pounds. And I was like, nope. It was burning after three reps. So I put it on 20 pounds. I started over. So what I started out originally was 10, uh, three sets of 10. So I could do at least 30 reps on a machine at low mm -hmm. weight. And that was all I could do. I could not do more. I had gotten up to um, 60 reps before I quit going to the gym. I could do 60 uh, before my arms just turned to jello and fell off the handles. Um and then I got on the elliptical and I was like, okay, I'm going to do a mile if it kills me. Um, and I actually was able to do that um, just like before. Like I hadn't really lost much on that. Um, I beat my target time by a minute and a half. But then I came home and I guess I hadn't had enough punishment. So I got out of the car and I mowed my yard. <laughs> and um, it was uh, a whole mess. But um I did do that, and that was three days ago, and my arms are still so sore. I can barely do anything, so I'm um, giving myself a little bit more recovery this time, but you are also inspiring me to go I back need, to the gym. I need inspirational <laughs> background music. I need to, yeah. I need, yeah, I'm paying need for the service. That. I do need that. Um, <laughs> my only, uh, well, two things. Okay, my two weaknesses. One is my rotor cuff on my right arm is a piece uh, of shit yeah. at this point. And I want to do butterflies at home. I got a home yeah. gym. Oh, that burns so bad. Oh, right no. Now. it, Honey, it didn't even get to the burning point. I heard. Yeah. And I said, nah, that's, I think I'll stop there. Yeah. So I, I got to talk to the doctor about that to see if I can get a massage therapist prescribed right. so that my insurance will pay for it. The other, the only other thing, um, 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 what does it say? Uh, it was cool. Oh, sit-ups. I started doing sit-ups. Went back to doing sit-ups. Oh, uh, <laughs> boy. I can do uh, sit-ups. I can't do push-ups. I probably can't do push-ups either, but it, I'll put it this way. I did them, and th but then also, as I mentioned on Facebook, I was tackled by two dogs uh, because dogs in the floor. Yeah. And, and I was wearing a black T-shirt, and he said, well, you can't wear that tomorrow because the dog hair on the carpet. But the main yep. thing was I could only do it at it 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 stayed the effect stayed with me. I'll yeah. Put it that way. Yeah. They uh so I, I have to uh, let that cause when I was a teenager I hated ab exercises. So yeah. It just I I've not I mean I've never been up like I played sports when I was in like elementary middle school um but I've never been athletic uh ever in my life. I don't plan on being athletic. <laughs> Uh, but Scarefest kicked my ass so bad this year. I wanted to at least be in like, not I don't that, know. Yeah, not not, 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 not that crying bad. by Sunday afternoon. That was as yeah, yeah that's exactly. A, it was rough. Um, it and you know, and I know we talked about that. It took me quite a while um, to recover from that one. Um, but do you have another commercial break to do? It is nine thirty, and this is normally when we would do. <laughs> We're going, well, it, 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 we oh, I'll put it this way: it's not that exactly, we do still have some stuff to announce. So yeah, we'll okay. go ahead and pop that over. Awesome. Okay, in the announcement category, Central Kentucky Mystical Market coming up May this month, twentieth and twenty first, twentieth and twenty first. I will be there doing really bad tarot and selling some Scarefest merchandise. So if you missed me at Full Moon Sisters, you can catch me at the Central Kentucky Mystical Market, Clarion Hotel, uh, Newtown Pike. We're, and we're going to be in the paddock for a while. I found out they're giving us a hell of a deal on the rent because as places like to do, they remodeled the room we were in and raised the rent. 
So, oh, um, great. Yeah, so I'll, I will be there. At, but we are going to stay in the paddock for a while. That's just right by the swimming pool. Scarefest Horror Film Festival is taking entries. And I'm not going to say the name of it. But, oh, my God, I watched a movie this week uh, in the judging process that actually redeemed all of these really shitty ones. <laughs> and I don't mean That's they're all awesome. shitty. awesome. I don't mean they're all shitty. But there have been some that this year I would say... I'll put it this way. One guy, you could tell he was wanting to show his effects prowess. Yeah. And fuck the story. Just fuck it. Fuck the story. But no, the um the, the one that um the one I watched one this week that really it was good enough to be on sci fi, definitely Netflix. That's awesome. I mean it, it it was network quality all the way across. Anyway, um so yeah, get the app get those in. Uh the speaker applications are open through this month. This is your last month. To uh, if you want to speak at the Scarefest 2023, so if you have a and we're we love the weirder the topic, the more we like it. So if you know about a serial killer, um, if your neighbor tortures cats, I don't know anything <laughs> that's weird, unusual. Oh, now, well, as we were talking about earlier in the show, I am approximately 12 to 13 percent. I'm 13% towards my goal. If you want to see me do the cosplay in the uh, in the uh, denim cutoff shorts and the crop top at Scarefest 2023, I have to have more patrons. Because I'm a hard ass about it. I want people to have skin in the game. You can do it for a dollar, people. One dollar. If, if I, I bet if I walked up most of you and said, hey, give me a dollar, I bet you'd give me a dollar. Well, do it once a month. <laughs> So anyway, so um, so that's what we have tonight. We're really sorry the announcements um couldn't couldn't come through, but um, this isn't the best way to advertise that. Wes, who said that? I don't know. I think Jake. It's, Jake, what what is the best way to advertise that I will appear um in in cosplay from Sleepaway Camp this year? If I get the Patreon to back me, to embarrass me to do it, to pressure me Look, to do it, I've I've done I've done my part, so y'all yes. need to step it up. And I went with like the platinum membership, so <laughs> there is actually one level above you, not just the Patreon. Is there really? Uh, yeah, I just added it like this week. Though I meant to do it, I never did activate it. It's basically, okay. and it's actually it, it actually says on it, it's just more money. You get nothing <laughs> extra. It gets. <laughs> Whatever, I want a lap dance in that car. Chris, Chrissy wants to know the goal amount. The goal amount is 100 patrons. It does not matter if they're $1 patrons. It does not matter if they're $10 patrons. It is 100 patrons. And uh, <laughs> Well, can we make aliases and like sign up under aliases? Yes, yes. Uh, every email account will, yeah. As long as you have a credit card and email account, <laughs> yeah. I don't give a rat's ass. The point is, the point is, if I'm going to do this, this is subsidizing my my rehab because my insurance quits paying on the twenty, actually nineteenth, nineteenth of this month on my yeah. re, on my cardio rehab. So see, ha, there, Jake. See, I'm crying big tears. Jake says, uh, "Me being in shorts at you and Jake." I'm sorry, me embarrassing myself like that. If that's not incentive enough, I just. I, I can you, tell y'all right now, I wouldn't show up in a crop top and denim shorts for a thousand patron subscribers. There you go. So. See, I, on the other hand, absolutely will just because I have no pride. Yeah, for wherever except, it's got. Except yeah. I, I'm not going to do, I, I'll, put, I'll be doing the sit-ups by then. Uh, <laughs> uh, or I'll go on that Yo, YOLO, YOLO, whatever that thing that freezes the fat off your, off your stomach. I see advertised all the time. On TV, so um. Well, yeah, if it's on the internet, it's the truth. Absolutely, <laughs> I know that it's, it's like I it's sound the like a broken news. record about the announcements tonight, but I do have to say that some of the offers that we have out right now. Um, I got an email earlier this week 
Um, but I, for full transparency, I'll share a little bit of, because it, it lit a fire up under my butt. I'll tell you that I got an email from someone and it was a very polite, very well-written email from a returning Scarefest attendee that was asking me for a refund on their tickets because they were not happy with our guest lineup. And before anybody, you know, says anything in the comments about, you know, uh, like I said, they were very polite and uh, they made some good points about the lineup that we've announced so far uh, is full of fantastic people. A lot of them are people that they have seen before, or maybe they didn't hold any personal interest in. And, um, you know, my response to that email was that we're not even halfway through announcements yet. Um, we have reached out to several people that are still very active in their careers. They're still filming movies. They're still filming shows. Um, there were two really phenomenal guests that we wanted this year that already have filming commitments for that time. Um, so, you know, it's good that we didn't announce them. Uh, they, they would have been great, and I hope to get them in the future. Um, but the, the offset of getting people that are still working, that are still filming and creating content, is we don't know in January, March, April, May, sometimes still, we don't know what their schedules are yet. So we don't get commitments this early um, on the, the bigger people. Um, now there's a lot of folks that we have that come to the show that make a lot of time for convention appearances. But even then, you know, um, a perfect example. I have seen two announcements in the last 48 hours about uh, Felissa, who is having to miss out on Friday of um, two different shows announced this week that she won't be attending on Friday because she has filming commitments. Of course, we, we mm -hmm. want them to film. We want them to make these, uh, you know, things for us to watch and enjoy and reasons why we want to meet. As Rob Mello says, that's the only goddamn reason you want my autograph. Yeah, exactly. So that is a great quote, and that's absolutely true. So, you know, but, you know, just this right now is kind of like a waiting game. But we do have um, a lot of lines out right now, and we've got a lot of people that have never done Scarefest before uh, that if we could get half commitments of the, the people that we put out, we're going to have a fantastic lineup this year. So please be patient. And I know everyone that's watching this obviously is. Um, you all are great. Uh, so that that's just something to keep in mind. When you start to get the higher caliber people that are still working, that's why the guest announcements sometimes get delayed or, you know, you don't start seeing headline-esque people until later in the year. But um, I am very happy with some of the... Uh, some of the people that we've talked about so far. So as soon as we can share those, we will. Also, um, this week, I've gotten some really cool photo op ideas from some reps and maybe some props that we can bring in for some of the people that we've announced. Um, you know, we're, we're still working on a lot of that kind of stuff. And as soon as we get the go ahead on those, we will announce them. Um, just a little bit boring, I guess, right now on the announcement front because a lot of the stuff's really super vague um but i'm excited and you will also be excited so just keep that in mind and uh and plus yeah and, and 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 i had one i could have pushed through tonight i contracted a celebrity this week yes but because i didn't think we need him i didn't go ahead and push the contract through so, uh, so he'll be ready next week. Um, anyway, um, now, what are you doing this weekend, Adrian? This weekend. Well, I know, like, oh, you right. strike me as not giving a goddamn about the derby type. So Yeah, the derby's this weekend. I forgot. I did <laughs> see some fancy hats um, earlier when I logged on to Scarefest TV. This guy had this really cool. <laughs> um, no, what, a, no, what, a, so, what a dick. No, I don't <laughs> anything crazy planned this weekend um i did get the um i i do have a lot coming up both personally and with scarefest may is gonna suck for me guys um like real bad 
So, um, you know, I don't like posting negative things on social media. Um, but obviously Mother's Day is going to suck this year. Um, my birthday is the day after Mother's Day, which is also going to suck this year. So, um, any happy things that you all want to share on my Facebook or send to me if you see a funny video, I need all of the cheering up that you can muster to keep me from crawling in bed and just sleeping until June. Um, I did find out last week that um, I will more than likely be going down to Texas for a show at the end of this month. Are you going to that one? A bummer because Wes can't go with me. No, I uh, actually, okay, believe it or not, no, I'm not, I'm not saying I want to go. We actually did find out the, our direction book on the purse does have an entire chapter devoted to how to get on an airplane when you're carrying something that looks like a bomb. Now, <laughs> so I, uh, but I'm, so I, because I'm going, because FrankenCon is like two weeks later. Yes. Uh. I'm thinking I may just wait and not try to make the Texas trip. Plus, you know, okay, now the Texas trip, uh, other not, other than wanting to see what some of the celebrities, how they do, I yeah. would not judge that convention in any way by this year because it's our no. first year in a new venue. And, well, and that's the thing. So that that is one thing I'm most excited about because, you know, as, as Wes knows, um, you know, I... I would not go back to that show, me personally. I would not go back to that show if it was still in a hotel. The show's phenomenal. The lineup's phenomenal. Um, their vendors, their guests, the team that puts it on, A++. Um, but the crowds, <laughs> uh, because the, the event space, it just it was not big enough for them. And I think that going to a convention center is going to do nothing but wonders for their show. Uh, I do know, and I'm sure they know also, there are a lot of differences between a convention center show and a hotel show. Mm -hmm. And so like Wes said, I will be passing no judgment um, in the negative on that regard. Uh, but I am looking forward to the fact that it will be a much more open space. Um, that is the only reason that I didn't put my foot down about going. And I just found out um, a couple days ago. Now we're supposed to, but also I pointed out it's Memorial Day weekend, so there is still a possibility that we're not going. But I, I think that, um, I think that that is probably going to happen. I am very much looking forward to going to FrankenCon, and I didn't know Wes that you were planning on going to FrankenCon. Are you rooming with me? Yes, I will go ahead and stick my neck out. Uh, Franken, because I missed it last year, especially. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just. I was determined that this year I did want to try to make it to FrankenCon. So the 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 only okay the only caveat anybody's keeping up with me like on my Patreon page, um, is whether or not I'll put it this way if if especially as long as Brandon is going has he said he's going to FrankenCon? So right now and uh, this is kind of. And I guess we could talk about this more later. Right now, I have one double room booked. Um, I think Christy's coming down for a day um, on Friday. And Brandon, wait, um, I had to change my reservation because I did not realize the show opened at noon on Friday. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going down Thursday to set up the booth. Um, and I think Brandon said he may come down Friday. My my basically everybody what I'm what I'm hinting at the only caveat I have is that I if I still am wearing my 1980 Kodak camera here um, that I should not drive that far right because basically if it decides to shock me and I have the radio playing too loud I die in a fiery death on yeah. the interstate so exactly uh, yeah so let's I'm going to try to avoid that but that's the, that's the that's the only well, that's but even, perfect. But, but basically, it's just a matter of, of somebody else would have to drive for me to go. Well, good, yeah. because in that case, then, um, if Brandon is coming down, we'll be booking a second room anyway, because I'll I'll bunk with you, but Brandon, I don't know. Um, so, uh, unless we're going to be sleeping on the floor, we'll go ahead and we'll, <laughs> we'll book another room, and uh, that way you all can 
can come down because that would be awesome. And anybody that's listening, if you have the option to check out FrankenCon this year, uh, I implore you to do so. I think, um, Wes, did you, um, did you hook up a time um, for a, a time to chat with the FrankenCon guys before the show? Yeah, June, June, wait a minute, let me think, uh, May. I have to look at a calendar. Yes, they are booked. They are coming up May 19th, right? Yes. Yes. May so 19th. Yes, Frank Frank and, Con Con. and then you're going to be doing Mystic Market on Saturday and Sunday that week. Yeah, I thought it is. Yeah, whatever yep. whatever the dates were, I yep. said. The 20th yeah. and the 21st. <laughs> I have no damn idea. Yep. Yeah, it's point, just it's like when I do tarot readings. I don't remember this. It just it comes out of my mouth. And then yep. There it goes. Oh, I did have a question from the chat room. Someone yeah. um, who uh, did ask if uh, Scarefest will be coming to Florida anytime soon. And the answer is no. And the reason is all of our stuff is here. Uh, we, <laughs> all my things are here and I don't like people. That's no, in all seriousness, we get that asked that a lot about, hey, when are you coming to this state? And, and other than attending other conventions, uh, Scarefest is pretty much for the time being a Lexington, Kentucky endeavor. Reason well, now I will amend to that. For I, the, had crazy, uh, I had a crazy thought last night and I'm not going <coughs> to say it out loud because I don't want to jinx it, but I'm going to talk to Wes about it and I might wait till he gets that box off. <laughs> but um, I have a crazy idea for a Scarefest event that would involve not being in Kentucky. But is it in Florida? Could be. Oh, oh well, hell. We're coming to Florida. No, I have no goddamn could idea. Could be. Because I don't it know any be. of this stuff. Well, it, I didn't know it until last night when I was having a conversation with my, hopefully at some point to be sister-in-law. Um, Hope, if you're watching this, I love you. Um, and we were something that she works on. Um, I think there might be a cool way to integrate that into what we do. So um, stay tuned because I'm going to pull some numbers and I'm going to look at some things and then... Uh, we're going to see about, um, does anybody remember years ago, and now this is totally unrelated. I just thought about this too. Um, we did a Scarefest Roadshow. Is that what it was called? The Scarefest? I wasn't a part of that. The answer is yes, I remember it uh, because it actually pulled celebrities out of the Paracon that I was going to oh. because it was, yeah, uh, Patty explained it to me a little bit. Basically, somebody was filming a movie. And needed us yeah, to uh, fake no, a, a convention. A and E was doing a, like a docu series or something. Oh, okay. Um, I think the A and E camera crew went around with Scarefest or something like that. Um, which it, it's nothing. Like I said, it's nothing like that. But I do remember that was a time that kind of Scarefest went on the road. Um, and you know, guys, we had um another thing. Like, there's so many things that uh, you know come across and we look into and we crunch numbers on and we, we try to make things happen. I'll, I'll give you like a little no names. Um, but there is a, a guest that I have wanted to get at Scarefest for several years. And it's not anybody I've ever said out loud um, to anyone on the show or anything like that. But um, they would be a huge draw. And um, turns out that for a completely unrelated reason, they were going to be in Kentucky this month. And um, I wanted to do an entire pop-up event surrounded, you know, just this one person. And um, because of the other commitment that they had, um, they didn't want to cross streams. <laughs> like they, they, you know, when they're in one mode, they want to stay in that mode. So they weren't interested in doing um, like a meet and greet type event uh, in the middle of this other project that they work on. So um, but, you know, we do look for ways that we can bring other things to you all. And even, you know, we do some local things. I think we've done a couple of the trivia nights and the ticket chases and things like that. Um, but there are other options out there. And we are looking into other events that we could do, um, you know, and hopefully in the next two years, um, that's something that we'll be able to make a reality. And, uh, you know. So if you all come up with ideas or things that you might like to be a part of, drop some suggestions on the Facebook page. I think that there are a lot of things that we could do 
that really wouldn't be a huge stressor on the planning side of things. Um, you know, so just something to keep in mind. Maybe. You almost convinced me. You almost had me convinced there. Not, not, not a big stressor. Not for me. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, okay, everybody, we're at, we're at the top of the hour. If there's, uh, do you have any more questions in the chat room? If you do, if you don't, we're going to let you go and and thank you for sticking with us tonight. Um, oh, with look at this. What the hell is that? One of our vendors that's going to be at Scarefest, and I'm blanking on her name. Um, uh, her name is Amanda, but I can't think of her booth name. She's going to be at Scarefest, and she makes these really cute little gnomes. No gnomes. My little cool. gnome pals. How cute is that? You can't have one because you will hit it with the lawnmower. Oh, bite me. Anita. Oh, and she makes these, too. It's a clawfoot tub, but it's a candle. And it now, that like I like. It. I like that. You cool. Looks like it's like a bloody bubble bath. Thought that was really cute. So it's in my office too. So um, everybody, we're gonna uh, get our Bonehead Weekly uh, a movie review in here. Um, he did Scream. What are we on last? Six? Yeah, seven. We got whatever. our weekly what? go Bone what? Fix. What? Whatever the new Scream movie is, um, it's another. It's kind of like. It's kind of like owning a summer camp. They just can't let it go. Just cannot let it go. Everybody, this has been Scarefest Television. Um, theoretically, might see you next week. That's the only show in May that no one has taken yet. So, um, just want to put that out there. But we do every we got booked through now through um, June, the middle of June almost. Uh, other, otherwise, so that's good news. That's good news. Everybody, it's been great talking to you. Good night, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Hey, Scarefest, this is Joe Lewis of Bonehead Weekly, and this week's review, it's not bad. I know some of you out there are Scream fans. Some of you out there, that's your favorite horror slasher film. I'm a big fan of the first one. Wes Craven did something different. Kevin Williamson did something different. I enjoyed it, and I was of the age to see it in a theater right out of high school into college, and it was perfect. However, I've even had the editor of the movie on Bonehead, Patrick Lussier. However, they really didn't need to be Scream sequels. And we have now six. There's We're on number six, so I'm talking about Scream 6. Now, I watched Scream 5 last year, and to me it was completely forgettable, but it came out and made a bunch of money. And it's directed by Olpen and Gillick. The two guys are called Radio Silence, and they have a great VHS segment and their best movie, Ready or Not. Go watch that instead of this, but that's beside the point. <sighs> Ready or Not. It's now streaming on Paramount Plus, Scream 6, and it's basically they, they moved it to New York City, and Ghostface is following them. I, I couldn't remember the people, characters in the movie. In fact, until they cut to a flashback, spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen Scream 5, I forgot Jack Quaid, who's in The Boys, was the bad guy in that last one. I forgot he was even in it. And I forgot that Jimmy Ortega is in this. I didn't remember anything. <sighs> anyway, I watched Scream 6. It's better than Scream 5. Will I remember a lot of it later on? I don't think so. But it is bloody. It helps moving it to New York City. But some of the same stuff that they're making fun of is the same crap that drives me crazy. Why doesn't anybody ever just reach over and pull off Ghost Face's face to see, oh, look, Shaggy, it's the guy who was trying to make the money and would have got away with it if it hadn't been for meddling Scream fans. Or why would they, they just stab him when they've got him down and they're sitting there as the, ah, threw down the knife. Oh, it drives me crazy. Or shoot him in the head. They finally do make that joke in this movie. Scream 6, should you watch it? If you're Scream fans, you've already seen it. I'm late to the party. It isn't bad. In fact, I enjoyed it more than it did Scream 5. And these Radio Silence guys, like I said, Ready or Not's their movie, but Scream 6 is an improvement. Samara Weaving in the opening, who's one of my favorite actresses, is a great sequence. It's a great opening sequence. Past that, I give this one about a B-, minus, even though I don't usually do it. So, Scream 6, Paramount+, Plus. this has been Joe Lewis of Bonehead Weekly. At least it was bloody. <laughs>